Hey, Tom Reagan here. I wanted to show you a few things about the variability in the hypogene on the Burmese python. The hypogene itself is real variable whenever it comes to the Burmese python. And what I mean by that is some of them are real light colored, some of them are real dark colored. The het genes are very obvious. Um, the hypogene tends, tends to accentuate that hypogene quite a bit. Um, the hypogene itself is very, very sensitive to its canvas, so depending on the color of the parents and the het genes that are in the offspring, uh, you're going to get a real different looking animal uh, dependent on the, the parents and dependent on the head genes uh, due to that hypo influence. So let me show you real quick. The, the hypo gene is, um, it was first imported into the U.S. around 2006 and 2007. And we first started making those clutches uh, breeding season 2008 and they hatched out in 2009. And when they first hatched out, there was a lot of variability that was noticeable right off the bat. Um, some of them were real light, some of them were real dark. But then when the head albinos hatched out, the ones that were hypo head albino, they looked totally different. And that was the first time we really noticed the extreme variability in, and the influence of the head traits on the hypos. Uh, so let me show you what I'm talking about real quick and some of the variability of these animals. All of these hypos um, were hatched here. This is a pretty common hypo. This is uh, about mid-range as far as color goes. Um, some of them are darker, some of them are lighter. But this hypo is pretty much uh, what you expect a typical hypo to look like. Now, you're going to get some remarkable ones that are lighter and darker and that sort of thing because of the variability in the hypo trait. And this one you see right here next to it is a hypo that's head for albino. Let's take a look at that one. When head albinos first hatched out, I told you they had kind of a glow. They were a, a really light pink, light yellow color. Um, and that color influence tends to stay throughout their life, and they actually yellow up more as they get older. Um, I'll do another video with some older hypos that are head for albino, um, both T-negative and T-positive albino, and show you the influence of those. Um, but you can see there that the hypo head albino gene is just a very, very obvious gene in these animals. And again, you're going to get variability. Some of them are going to be lighter, some of them are going to be darker, but when they hatch out, they're smoking. Next to this one, we've got the hypo that's head for granite. The hypo head for granite, you can tell because of a more broken up pattern on the side, it becomes a very obvious head as well. Um, you can't look at the back pattern so much like you can on the normal or the normal Burmese pythons to see the head granite influence. You kind of got to go to the side and check out the sides a little bit. You can see that extra broken up pattern there on the sides. This animal right here is probably head for albino. Um, it's got that yellow glow to it. Real pretty animal. These animals were 66% pos head albino. I think this one is. Next to that, I want to show you the influence of the green gene in the hypos. And this is a hypo that's head for, um, head for green. And you can see a real strong circular pattern, that leopard influence on this animal. That has to do with the hypogene's influence on that head green trait. Now, they aren't all this circular, they aren't all this obviously um, head green, but you can see a remarkable difference in the head greens and say the head granites. Now this animal too is probably head for albino also because it is so remarkably light and this animal also is 66% possible head for albino. I think it is. So that's a cool little animal there. One more animal that I want to show you. This animal hatched out this year. This is a double, actually a triple head for albino, green, and granite. You can see that it's the head albino trait because that light butter yellow is just a gorgeous light colored animal. But then you can also see the circular pattern going down the back and, and especially back closer towards the tail. But then as you look at the sides, you can also see that het granite influence by that broken up pattern going down the sides. So this animal right here is actually triple het for albino, green, and for granite. Little boy and uh, got great plans for him. One more animal that I was going to show you, this is a little bit older animal from uh, last year. This animal right here is its hypo and it's het for T positive. And you can see here that she has got sort of a light orange color. She'll slow, slow down a little bit. She's got sort of a light orange color about her that tells me that she's het. And the het T negatives have a real yellow color to them, a real light glow and yellow color. And this being het T positive with no het T negative possibilities at all, come here. She is also a very obvious het gene as well. So I'm real excited about this project and what it has to offer. So 
Anyway, that's just a little bit of what I wanted to show you with some of the variability in the HET genes and the variability in the hypos and the different HET traits that they make. There aren't all HET traits right now available. Well, I'll say that. In the hypo, there are some HET labyrinths, um, hypo HET labs floating around out there, but they've got some other influence in them. Um, so we'll see what that brings about. But anyway, just wanted to show you some of the, the hypos and the HET traits and the variability in those animals. So thanks for watching.